In our discussion of polynomial rings, it's very appropriate to mention that you can have a polynomial ring with multiple indeterminates. You can have more than one. Um, as polynomial rings can be formed over any ring, it's possible to construct a polynomial ring when the coefficient ring itself is a polynomial ring. So be, if R is a ring, then R adjoined X is a polynomial ring, but that makes it a ring, and therefore we could adjoin a new indeterminate, because all that we require is that Y be some symbol, some number that is not inside of the set Rx whatsoever. So we could adjoin a second variable Y to the ring Rx. And so it does take a little bit of an argument, uh, but it is straightforward to prove that the ring, uh, the, the polynomial ring with the variable y, whose coefficient ring is the polynomial ring r join x, this is isomorphic to, as a ring to the polynomial ring where your indeterminate is x and your coefficient ring is r join y. And that, that, poly, that isomorphism is very, very straightforward. I'm going to leave it as an exercise to the viewer to prove that, in fact, these two rings are isomorphic to each other. And since they're isomorphic to each other, it doesn't really matter which representation you use. And as such, we define uh, the polynomial ring with two variables, r adjoin x and y, to be then the, the ring that represents these two isomorphic rings. Pick whichever one you want, it doesn't matter. And so this is the ring of polynomials over R with two indeterminates. And by induction, we can repeat this process because this is a ring, so we could add on a new variable. And that's a ring, so we could add on a new variable. Uh, and we can keep on going, 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 going. And since we have all these variables, it's probably just easier to call them x1, x2, all the way up to xn. And so this is then the ring of polynomials with coefficients coming from R with n distinct indeterminates, which we do require that these are different elements. Uh, they're not the same element, and we do allow them to commute with each other. So when we talk about these polynomial rings, x, y equals y, x, um, x, i times x, j is equal to x, j times x, i. Uh, with these polynomial rings, these multivariant polynomial rings, uh, the the variables do commute with each other. Um, otherwise, we might have a frustration when it comes to this isomorphism. That should be stated. And that's important to state because I said earlier that with these indeterminate elements, we're not assuming any um, algebraic relations. There is one exception. I mean, other than the fact that anything that's a consequence of the ring axioms, we have to accept. Uh, but the one exception is we do consider these indeterminate elements to be central. That is, they commute with everything in the ring. Uh, they, com they commute with coefficients and they commute with other uh, indeterminate variables as well in this situation. And in particular, um, if R is a commutative ring, then this polynomial ring will, will be commutative if and only if. If R has unity, then this polynomial ring will have unity, and that's an if and only if statement. Um, if this ring R is a domain, then the polynomial ring will be a domain if and only if. Again, this is just a consequence. This is just a consequence of induction, right? Because as you add on each new variable, that's by induction uh, a commutative or with unity or domain, and therefore adding the new one uh, it keeps on going there. Now, I want to end this in this this short video about multivariant. Uh, polynomial rings by mentioning the very famous Hilbert basis theorem. We're not going to pro provide the proof of that that goes beyond the scope of this lecture series, but this is a very important result to state here that how does how does this uh, multivariant polynomial ring, how is it affected by the Noetherian condition, so the ascending chain condition? Um, if R is a Noetherian ring, then it's true that R adjoined X is a Noetherian ring, and therefore by induction, so would be Rx uh, R adjoin x1, x2, adjoin x3, adjoin x4. And so if your coefficient ring is Noetherian, then your polynomial ring is Noetherian as well as you put on any number of variables. And in all of these statements, I'm referring to a finite number of variables. Um, if you were to have an infinite number of variables, induction exact doesn't exactly work anymore. You'd have to use some type of trans finite induction. And therefore, some of these results might not be true. So we will only consider... Uh, the situation where we have a finite number of variables. We're also assuming that the variables commute with each other. 
Um, one can actually construct the notion of a non-commutative polynomial ring where the variables don't commute with each other. Uh, but again, th those are topics, very important topics in ring theory, non-commutative ring theory to be specific, that we are not going to delve into in this lecture series.